Hi everyone. So welcome to the question of the day series. My name is Tarun Malik and today we will discuss a question which will help you in cracking 99 plus percentile in CAT exam. So initially I'll be taking original CAT questions from the last uh, five years you can say, correct? And uh, that will actually help you in getting the idea that how this question will help you in creating, in cracking uh, the good percentile, correct? 99 plus at least, okay? So let me just briefly give me, give you the idea about myself. So my name is Tarun, as I told you. So I have almost 18 plus years of experience in uh, LRDA and QA or MBA entrance examination. I am academic head of an academy, ex academic head of CL, content head as well. Uh, I have scored 100 percentile in QA DI in CAT. And in Z, highest percentile was 99.99 because Z does not give 100 percentile, correct? If you are aware of that. Anyways, so without wasting much time, let me give you a brief question, right? So this is your first question. You can pause the video and come back when you solve it. This is previous year CAT question. All right, so I hope you have solved it now. Now, the idea of giving you this question, right, is, is actually like this, that how can some questions be solved in less than 30 seconds? Okay. First, I will give you the proper approach, which most of you must have applied. Okay. And then I'll give you the proper shortcut, how this question can be solved in 10, 20, 30 seconds or similar to that, similar to these type of questions, correct? Okay, so let me give you the uh, proper idea first of all, okay, how to solve this, okay. So if you look at the expression, uh, these are surges in the denominator, right? So you must know that whenever such kind of uh, expression is given to you, you need to rationalize it, right? Because uh, in the denominator, we need to simplify it, correct? So if I take this first term only to the initial point, it is one upon root A1 plus root A2. So if I rationalize it, I will multiply this with root A1 minus root A2 in the numerator as well as denominator. Correct. So it will be what? In numerator, it will be root of A1 minus root of a2. In the denominator, it will be a plus b into a minus b, which is a square minus b square. When you square this, this root will be cancelled out, right? So it will be a1 minus a2 simply. Correct. Okay. Now see, because a1, a2, a3 are in arithmetic progression. So this is nothing but the difference of the consecutive terms, which is called d, correct? I mean, can I replace this denominator with simple D, correct? So it will be root A1 minus root A2 upon D. Okay. So first term is like this. So let me write it again. Root A1 minus root A2 upon D. Now when you apply the same concept in the second term, denominator will still be D a2 minus a3. Numerator will be root of a2 minus root of a3. Similarly, next term will be root of a3 minus root of a4 upon d. Correct. Till last one is root of a n minus root of a n plus 1 upon d. Now I can take d common. And when you add these terms, you can see that A2 will be cancelled out, root A3 will be cancelled out, root A4 will be cancelled out. So till here, we can cancel out the terms. So what we are left with, root of A1 minus root of A n plus 1. Okay. So this uh, should be my answer. But uh, you can see that in the options, we have uh, roots in the denominator. So can I say we need to again rationalize it? 
Correct. So now I'll multiply this with root a1 plus root a n plus 1 in the numerator as well as in the denominator. Correct. Again, it will be what? 1 upon d into in the numerator will be a minus b into a plus b again, which is again a square minus b square. Root will be cancelled out. So you'll get a1 minus root minus a n plus 1, sorry, divided by root of a1 plus root of a n plus 1. All right. Okay. Now I need to figure out about this. What is the value of a1 minus a n plus 1? So just uh, you can make a series like a1 minus a2 is what? D. If I do a1 minus a3, it will be 2D. If I do a2, a, sorry, a1 minus a4, it will be 3D. Right. So you can see when it is 2, it is 1D. When it is 3, it is 2D. When it is 4, it is 3D. So what is when it is n plus 1, it will be n d correct i mean i can replace the numerator with n into d divided by d into root of a1 plus root of a n plus 1 d will be cancelled out your answer is n upon this which is option a. correct so this is the proper approach of this question correct so I hope it is clear to you. Now I will give you the shortcut or jugad of this. Okay. Hindi speaking student must have know about this. Must have known about this. Correct. All right. So now what is the jugad or what is the short tech? So let me erase this first. So this trick is applicable in a series question whenever n is involved. Correct? So you can see it's a series. And we have n terms in this series. Correct? Because we are moving from a1 to a n. So in such kind of question, the trick is had there been only one term I mean, if n is equal to 1, if I put n is equal to 1, I'll get this term. So my point is, if n is equal to 1, this series has exactly one term, which is the first term. So obviously, at n is equal to 1, my sum of the series must be this only, because there is only one term. So that is the only uh, sum we can get. So now, again, I will put this n is equal to 1 in the options. And whichever option give me this, that must be my answer. What the point? So look at this. So if I put n is equal to 1 here, it will give you n is equal to 1, sorry. So 1 upon root a1 plus root a2, which is my answer. But wait, we need to check others also, okay? It might be possible that two different options will give you the same value, okay? Uh, if you put n is equal to 1 here, it will be it will give you 0. This also gives you 0. And this gives you 1 upon root a1 minus root a2, which is not my answer. So you can see three options are definitely ruled out. So my answer is option A. Now this is the actual cat options, okay? So you can see how this trick can be applicable in such kind of questions. But in case, suppose there are two options which gives you the same value at n is equal to 1. Okay. So you can put n is equal to 2 also. Correct. So the point is, even if you don't know how to solve this question, let's say for the series 1. And still you need to find the value of uh, some of the series. You can apply this trick. n is equal to 1. It has to be the first term. n is equal to 2. It has to be the summation of the first two terms. And obviously, first two terms can be easily calculated using summation and AP formulas. Correct? 
I hope it is clear. Although in some of the cases, you can put n is equal to zero also. Think on this also. What if n is equal to zero? So there is no term. If there is no term, sum must be zero. So at n is equal to zero, sum must be zero. So you can see that these two options are straight away ruled out because when you put n is equal to zero, uh, it will not give you zero. But uh, we are still left with A and D option. So that's why it is not working here. But obviously when you put n is equal to one, it will only give you one options. I hope it is clear, right? Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the video. So we will try to do such kind of questions in the coming time also and keep watching daily for the question of the day series. All right, thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye.